Hi guys. Um, so I realize after this weekend that um, several of you are missing some major grade assignments. And so I figured the best way to help you guys get those done is for me to go ahead and make a video uh, of today's lecture so that you guys can go back and watch this and then take a short quiz over the American and French revolutions. So last class we spent a good portion discussing what a revolution is. We looked at different images of revolutions. We listened to a couple of songs that discussed revolutions. And so um, throughout history, there's been multiple ways to define a revolution. And so we saw some Im images of government officials with guns, uh, some images of large groups of people that look like more of the political establishment. Um, we saw some of unarmed people marching through the streets, some people dressed all the same, some with flags and banners, um, some people fighting, just maybe one or two people resisting government power, but something that was consistent through all of these things was change. And so I want you to think about as we go through these different revolutions, what is the change that is happening? Is it political with the government? Is it economic? with money or jobs um, or other resources? Is it social about your social status or social standing and, and maybe category? Um, and also think about the causes of these revolutions. So what caused them? What were the events leading up to that? And then also look at the effects. What was the result? So was the result a successful revolution? Was it a partial revolution and so on? So our first, four questions or the main four questions we're going to be answering throughout this unit um, are really comparing the causes, characteristics, and consequences. So that's kind of causes and effects of the American and French revolutions. We're going to look at this guy named Napoleon Bonaparte um, and the Napoleonic Wars and how he begins to transform Europe and Latin America. Uh, we're also going to look at how the American Revolution and the French Revolution begin to influence Latin American revolutions and Latin American independence movements. Um, and so something that's going to be common throughout all of these revolutions are these enlightenment ideas like separation of powers, checks and balances, liberty, equality, democracy, popular sovereignty, constitutionalism, uh, nationalism. And in some of these revolutions, you might find that some of these ideas are more um, prevalent than in others. So um, topic one, we are comparing uh, causes and effects of political revolutions. So the first political revolution that is often said uh, begins with this shot heard around the world and kind of influences all other subsequent revolutions is going to be the American Revolution in 1776. So this should really be kind of a review for you guys uh, in eighth grade if you took U.S. history in eighth grade. Um, but basically you have the British colonists, uh, so the people living in the colonies, um, and they are uh, refusing to pay taxes. So their big their big claim is no taxation without representation. And so the British had begun taxing them um, more and more and more to help pay for this French and Indian war. So they say no taxation without representation. That goes against what Parliament says is our right. Um, and so they're going to have influences from this glorious revolution in England. That was where they got the, the English Bill of Rights and also the Enlightenment ideas that power uh, of the government comes from the consent of the governed or its people. What are the effects of this? The effects are going to be the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. Um, they're going to borrow ideas primarily from John Locke. Remember the rights to life, liberty, and property, and Montesquieu. So that's that se separation of powers. The main impacts of the American Revolution are going to be that they're going to encourage the French Revolution and then later the independence movements of Latin America. Um, and so the second revolution we will discuss is going to be the French Revolution. And so you have the American Revolution in 1776. Um, they are demanding government reform. They say no taxation without representation. And the second revolution we're going to look at is the French Revolution. And so main causes 
of this French Revolution in 1789 um, is going to be really inequality. So more than just representation in government, the French are fighting about equality even more so than the Americans. And so in France, there was this extreme inequality among these these three social groups called the three estates. Um, in addition to this, there was a severe economic crisis and most of the economic and tax burden was really placed on the third estate, which was the lowest of those three estates. Um, and so Louis the 16th, he's going to summon the estates general. That was basically like their their Congress to vote on new taxes to relieve the financial crisis. And they do, they blame or they kind of burden the lower classes and the top classes really, they don't have to pay any of the taxes to get out of this financial crisis. Um, and so the French are going to write this document called the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen. And here they are going to demand um, equal rights, and more so than establishing its own government, they are going to establish kind of uh, equal rights among citizens um, within France. Uh, there's going to be this huge event that kind of is is the uh, the beginning point and the catalyst of the French Revolution is when they storm this prison that holds all the weapons, the storming of the Bastille. Um, and eventually King Louis XIV is gonna be executed with the guillotine. Um, and once this revolution takes place in France, uh, the revolutionaries are going to enter into war with all the other European nations um, because the European nations around France are gonna be uh, be threatened by by these new revolutionary ideas and the fact that this absolutist king uh, ruling with divine right had been executed uh, by this populist uprising. Um, and so the revolutionaries actually are going to enter into this time period called the reign of terror, where they are going to demand complete and total loyalty to their revolutionary ideas. And so if anyone disagreed with them, they were executed. Well, whenever you rule that strongly, um, there's gonna be opposition. And so as France is in kind of this time period of terror and chaos, uh, people are eventually going to um, rise up against the revolutionaries themselves. And so this guy Robespierre is eventually going to be um, executed as well. Um, and so following this reign of terror and this reign of radicals and revolutionaries, um, the French are going to look towards this strong military leader named Napoleon Bonaparte, who is going to say, I, I believe the uh, democratic ideals and the ideals of equality expressed in this French Revolution, but I have a strong enough hand and I have enough power um, to keep everything in order, to kind of solve the problems that we faced under this radical revolutionary rule of Robespierre. And so Napoleon is going to combine traditional laws and ideas with revolutionary laws. And so they're going to have this whole new legal system called the Napoleonic Code. And Napoleon himself even though he claims that he is this new revolutionary kind of different style of leader, he's really going to rule in these kind of old European ways of, of appointing his brothers and his sisters and his family to rule over places in Europe. And so he's going to go and he's going to go invade a lot of other countries, um, conquering most of Europe. Um, uh, but basically, again, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about this later. If you invade Russia, you usually lose. And so he loses whenever he tries to invade uh, Russia. And so this conquest of Napoleon is going to inspire this new sense or basically a more intense feeling of nationalism that was already beginning to grow. And so this sense of nationalism is really going to um, to cause the other European rulers to to kind of say okay we need to go back to the old ways and we need to redraw the boundaries of europe so they're going to redraw their empires and kind of put those emperor and those ruling families back in power after napoleon um but also another effect of napoleon is going to be um is going to be on Latin America. And so a lot of the Latin American countries are also going to have this feeling of, of nationalism, and that's going to inspire them along with the 
um, American Revolution to demand their independence from European rule. So like the American Revolution and like the French Revolution, um, Latin American leaders are going to want to be able to establish their own government. And so key here is they want to be independent from foreign rule. They're not really looking so much for equal representation within their country themselves, but they really don't want to be ruled by somebody who is over in Europe. So they, during, um, before Napoleon, so during the French Revolution, they were ruled by Spain or maybe Portugal. Um, and then when Napoleon comes to power, Napoleon appoints his brothers and relatives to rule over these areas. And so that's the time period in Mexico when you have Maximilian uh, ruling over Mexico. Um, and so once Napoleon is gone, these Latin American nations are going to want to be Latin American countries or Latin American nation states and demand their independence. Um, at the same time, and we'll take a special look at this, this uh, revolution, the Haitian re revolution. And so this Haitian revolution is going to be the only or one of the only successful slave revolts in history. And so Haiti is going to become uh, a nation that is entirely ruled by former slaves. And so they're going to take both ideas from the American Revolution, the Latin American independence movements, and really stay true to these ideas of equality and everyone having human rights whenever they they want their Haitian um, independence. Um, and so, as I've kind of said, uh, so this, the American and the French revolutions, they're going to influence the Latin American nations by having them kind of desire um, their own independence and their their freedom to be able to have their own nation states outside of this European domination and European rule. Um, and so more so, as I've said, for the Latin American nations led by Simon Bolivar, it's not so much a social revolution, but they want their uh, independence from, from imperial rule. Um, and so, as I've said, all of these revolutions, as we take a closer look at them, we'll notice that they had the separation of powers, they um, want checks and balances, some of them want more freedom for everyone than others, so liberty, equality, again, is going to be something that's, that's something you'll have to take a critical look at. Who is equal? Who is determined uh, a citizen? Who is determined to have a right? Popular sovereignty. So, who has power in the government is something to question when you're looking at this. Are they fighting for everyone to have power? Are they fighting for just some people to have power? Um, what rights are people born with? Uh, who is born with those rights according to these revolutionaries? Um, and then of course, rule of law, and then this sense of nationalism that you're gonna create your own nation for your own people um, to basically create your own government. Um, and so there will be two more videos, one on the American Revolution and one on the French Revolution for you guys to watch. And then you'll have a short quiz to compare and contrast both of those.